So no one can't tell me I can't do nothing because I know I can. Because I can't come back from that injury and then make it to where I am today with, with all my medals. So no one can't say, oh, yeah, you, you haven't done ABCs. Well, I have. I just broke my leg, dislocated all my knees, took how many, well, had two operations, had to do so much madness, like go for my degree, go through college, had to do all the stress that comes with it. So yeah, I'm stronger than, no one can't tell me how strong I am. So that's why I believe, like, top tier me. So, Philip, welcome to The Gateway. Lovely to have you. Thank you. Thanks Good. for inviting me. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes, The Gateway, we are at Workable London. Um, big shout out to them for ooh, ooh. partnering us on this <laughs> show. Um, so, yeah, for those who don't know, I'm Deji. But let's talk about you. We actually have a special guest today. Let me, let me keep it real. You know, the Americans, they always say they need to give people their flowers. Well, like, you have any flowers? Mm-mm. I've oh, got flowers. But verbally... Let's start right then. Verbally, <laughs> um, <laughs> verbally, I need to give this lady a proper introduction. So, mm-hmm. Asha Phillip is a Olympic... Mm-mm, restart. Asha Phillip is a two-time... Two-time Olympic medalist. A two-time world championship medalist. Ooh, a European medalist. Commonwealth medalist. Fifth fastest woman in the history of this Britain, of this country. Um, you're Olympic sprinter representing Great Britain. It's a pleasure to have you on. Gateway athlete as well. I so, yeah, okay. also. also <laughs> um, actually, fun fact, the first Gateway sports athlete. Yes. We're going to get in, we're going to get into that. Um, but Asha, it's good to have you. How are you doing? I'm good, honestly. I'm fine. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Good, good news. So, um... You just come off of a very, very busy summer. Mm-hmm. Could we say it's probably the most busiest summer that you've ever had in your career? I think anyone said, yes. Yeah, it was shocking. Three championships in the space of six weeks. On paper, it sounds all right. Because I'm like, oh, you just got a couple of races, like one race here and a relay and a break. And then like just race, relay, race, relay. But then you're forgetting the stress of what a championship brings. Okay, so for more context, so... Just like in other sports, so like, let's say football. So obviously the athletic season this year due to the COVID mm-hmm. situation a couple of years ago, everything got squashed into 2022. So you had a World Championships. In Oregon. In, yeah, Oregon on the East Coast. You had a U, uh, Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games Birmingham. in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. And then you had a European Championships in Munich. In Munich. Germany. So mm-hmm. pretty much imagine having a, a Football World Cup plus the European Championships, plus something else altogether. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Well, football, do you, you get more rounds in it, in the Championship? Uh, Ours are like... To be fair, I think in football you do get, it's a long, it's, it's a longer period of time because you've got group stages okay. and so on and so Perfect. forth. But still, it's the same, same principles. It's a lot. Mm. How did you find that experience? It was fun at first. They went to Birmingham, actually. I think Birmingham gave us a good wind of like... You know, energy. Because Com- home champs. Commonwealth Games, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Commonwealth so. Games was like, it was fun. Your family got to be there, see you. And just, you know, home crowd is nothing. Like, in, like there's nothing in the world that... I, my English is wrong. There's nothing in the world better than a home champs. Have you... Um, why? What's... The, what's just I, the I know why, but I'm just trying to... Huh? The crowd is insane. And the British, they always... They, they do have one of the best crowds, like, throughout the whole of sport. But home champs, they just, they just screech. Like scream. Is that because British people are passionate? And they just love us. It's and true. we love them. It's true. It's true. There's a video on your <laughs> uh, on your um, Instagram where it's you and Bianca. Yeah. You just finished the, the four by one relay. And then you see your family in the crowd. That was nice. That was very nice. That was nice. my little mum at the end. She always wants a hug at the end of her races. So those are the moments where I give her hugs. Yeah. Usually on the normal day, I'm not giving her a hug. She just gets a bit, <laughs> she's my minute. <laughs> so so let's talk about your family. So your family, um, I know you're very close to your family. Mm-hmm. And I know that they have attended and basically travel with you wherever you go in the world, whenever you race or compete. 
Um, how much of an influence were they in getting you into sport? Well, growing up, it was like, it wasn't, I don't say it was an influence. It was like we were forced. Forced. My mum will say, no, we, we <laughs> thought you would like it. Well, you know, when you get older, you don't want to do anything else. You just want to yeah. be a child, mess around. You know, after school, you you know catch a bus and then mess around with your friends like, at the bus stations, cause a holy havoc, get in trouble. I never really had the opportunity to do that. Whether that was a good thing or not, I don't know. Yeah. But as a child, you wanted to be in the mess and with your friends. But we'd always go to our sports. So literally, like four, we've been doing different types of sports. Trampoline was very big for our family. We used to go to Kent on a Tuesday and a Saturday. Imagine us, me and my two cousins, getting on the train to Kent. Apparently, it was safe back then. Like, from you know, East London from to Kent. East London, from our secondary school to Kent on a Tuesday, and our coach just to drop us back. Like, I mean, when we look back at it, it was tiring at times, but, you know, it got us far. So, it built when, up. Um, when did you start athletics? Mm, I don't know, 14, 15, maybe? 14, 15? I wouldn't say I, I did, it wasn't big. Yeah. I never know the date or whenever I actually started, but it was around probably like that, maybe 13 to 14. That's cool. You know, a lot of people like, oh, I started when I was yeah. three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. Um, Our school never did um like sports day like that. What do you mean? Like, I know we did do a sports day. So we know how you got that bar of sports. Yeah. We never cool. had that. Yeah. So I just do, they made me do the 200, burning in my eye. Do not like them, even though everyone else forced me to do them. But we had to do a 200. And then, yeah, we never did like borough sports to go to the next round to see if I was actually good at it or not. It's okay beating your friends at school, but then, like. So when did you school. realize, actually, I'm slightly quick? So we had a meet in um, Newham, mm-hmm. which is my first, you know, my club. And I think I must have broke the record there, or the coach, Carl Graham, came up to my mum and said, like, your daughter's really fast. She should do, she should do track and field. And then mum was like, I'm okay, I should think about it. Then I went to a couple of sessions and not, okay, people may call me a princess or diva. You can say whatever you like, but track and field is outside. Mm? I just come from a, tra- was it trampoline? And that was an indoor sport, you know, it was warm, cozy, no matter what. And you always go outside and train in the evening in the cold. I said, yeah, that worked for me. So it took, I mean, I feel sorry for Carl because he, he went through, <laughs> he went through a lot back then, especially he was a bit cheeky back then and, Stuff. It was cold. How do you get me outside in the cold and the <laughs> rain? My hair in the rain, you know? Um, but, you know, it was nice because there was girls that looked like me that were there. Mm-hmm. And there was boys, you know? That was also another you know, factor. Okay. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, no, it was it was fun. It was nice to, you know, just see a different side of different sports because the trampoline, it was kind of like team-based. So athletics wasn't. Mm. But at the beginning, it was a lot of fun. It was just messing around with your mates that you just met from like another part of East London, like from Newham, because I never used to go down there, but it was nice. It was, honestly, it was fun. Yeah, so um, there's a few things in there which made me, uh, made me laugh. What, the Obviously, boys? the boy comment is funny, <laughs> but more so the outside stuff, because you haven't changed, like you yeah, still yeah, yeah. don't want to be outside in the cold. Yeah, I'm not on it. Um, <laughs> it's evil, you know. They got us competing at stupid o'clock at night in the cold, and then the rain wants to come. I mean, shout out to the fans that come and stay, but we're doing this on the start line, and we're, we're smiling through... The the the, the shivers like mm, like yeah I'm great this is fun That's... it's not fun at times it's really not okay but you um were a very good not athlete but obviously into sports so you mentioned mm-hmm. you did trampolining you became a world youth champion in trampolining you became world youth champion in athletics as Think well for hundred meters year. in the same year I think so yeah so you're a world champion at two sports and you're like 15. Yeah. So trampolining, is this like a, you run up and you have like a vault like you see in... Well, I always describe it as a vault because you have to run and land on the map. It's mm. a small trampoline or trampet. It's like tilted at the front there and then that bit there and then the mat. So you run, you jump here, do a move, land here on the flat part, then you land on the... Um, so the how did it work? Let's break it down. So you're doing trampoline training mm-hmm. and you're doing you're, you're doing track training or you're tra- you training for I must, yeah but it wasn't like I was doing much I don't think it was like maybe once or twice a week as well so yeah. you became world champion in the flex doing training once or twice a week mm, maybe maybe three times <laughs> I think but I put a lot of work in before so when I say that plus I, everyone says yeah you run with trampoline and it's not the same you run with like straight arms you're not sprinting you're mm-hmm. like pitter pattering just trying to get your speed up to do it but um, yeah I don't know how. I just feel not say I was talented, but we did put in a lot of work. Yeah. And um, 
I've been training since I was a child, so I feel like I have it inside me. No, nah, clearly. I mean, it's a lot. It's, it's it, when you're talking about it. Obviously, I know the story a bit, but it's just like it's a, it's um, maybe because I'm a parent now. Mm. I'm, hey, come on, up, <laughs> yeah. But maybe you're thinking like, raw, like actually, and every parent is like, let me put my. I can imagine in the years to come, I'm going to be like, let me put my children into mm-hmm. this sport and that sport. So I actually kind of appreciate when you said forced. I can kind of see myself like... Yeah, but I feel like we should, should be forced. Because mm-hmm. as a child, you don't want to do anything. Like, I can look at my niece now. She probably might hate me talking about her, but she doesn't like... She doesn't like the sporty side in her as of yet. I say yet, because we told her this year in school, you will join a club, whether you like it or not. And um, you see if you have my nephew that absolutely loves sports. Mm-hmm. But then you just, you know... If you don't like sports, I always said you've got to have something else that you're interested in and you have to strive in it. So if you're going to like do art, if you're going to do, I don't know, be a doctor, like I'm going to give you the tools to go and do it. Mm. Even if it's, you don't do it in the future, but at least I know you're entertaining your brain somehow. So me not been doing sports, I don't know if I would have been here today, but my whole family loves sports. We, it keeps us fit, you know, it's social, especially when they all play netball together. Why well, don't I watch? I got to literally go to their netball games just to watch and be sociable. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's something they should be interested in and it keeps them out of trouble. And I know for a fact, had I not been in sport, I think I could have been, I'm saying I could have been in trouble. I could have just, I could, God knows what I could have done. What would you, what would you have been if you were? I there? don't know. I was really cheeky back then. Yeah. I say, well, I say the words are cheeky, probably rude to the teachers. But okay. In my mind, I was just cheeky. Why? Oh, sometimes it just irritated me and I just needed to tell them. <laughs> Make you think I'm, I'm yeah okay I wasn't bad like I never put my hands on anybody yeah. I just like I hope not um, she just sometimes if you just said a comment my mouth was quick to respond mm-hmm. well, look, which is never know, a good thing because I see my nephew do it but he's good and you have to laugh at him be like no 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 you're talking to an adult here but now I see where we went wrong no but to be fair that kind of like when you're competitive when you're sporty when you're like a very like uh, charismatic person <laughs> I can imagine that that could also... No, I was, I was very bad like that. Okay. I was Whoa. very cheeky. Very, very, very cheeky. Mm-hmm. So today, I'm cheeky too, but I've, I've tamed it. I've, it's now banter. We thank God for it's growth. It's banter, yeah, yeah. Thank God for yeah. growth. Come on. <laughs> um, but you... So twi- so um, some people may know your story, some people mm-hmm. may not, but um, a lot of what I see in your career is actually kind of definitely overcoming various different things to make it happen um 2007 mm-hmm. i think yeah you, you run so you won the world youth championships then you went to a, a meet in a, a tra- trampoline event in quebec canada mm-hmm. and then you did a little you did a, a mm-hmm. run you did a jump and then you landed and then your leg was pointing that way that is correct and you're you're facing this way mm-hmm. what happened <laughs> <laughs> Popped out, didn't it? <laughs> uh, that was meant to be my last trampoline competition. I feel like had it trampolining with double mini, shall I say, been an Olympics, maybe that would have been a bit, mm-hmm. bit different for so me. By that, so, so after you won the World Youth Championship, you decided that actually well, you've mm, got to pick a sport. Because it's true, doing two sports yeah. in elite level. I mean, if I wasn't studying, mm-hmm. I feel like it could have been done. Yeah, I believe if I wasn't studying, I could have done both. Had... Um, I've been advised in a certain type of way. I feel because obviously time was very limited. Athletics will come in a bit like, no, you should do this. Like, not like like planting seeds, but, you know, it was a different environment for me. It was something new. I'd done trampolining for such a long period. I wanted to try something else. But I was so good at double mini that I didn't want to just walk away from it. So I thought, okay, cool. Because if I go to the World Championships and I walk away with a medal, then I'm fine. I'm just have done it. I've got myself a junior medal. Now I've got myself a senior medal. Mm-hmm. I'll be happy with it. But um, I knew I was going to get a medal from the championships. Like no one could tell me I was that, that I was literally that strong. I was like, I'm going to get a bit of weapons. Gold, silver, bronze, I'm walking away with one. We get there. Um, this is the senior world championships now, it's not junior seniors. See confidence. And um I made the final, mm. but we had the team final the day before. And um, yeah, me and my coach decided to do a pass, we call them passes, to make sure we put the team in a good position or whatever, whatever at least get a medal from that. And then as I did it, probably one of the best passes I've ever done. Um, yeah, as I landed, money just went, dislocated, gone, popped. And you like you roll back and you just like you look up and your legs point in that direction and you just start screaming. Like I just screamed out of shock, like what on earth? Because you as I don't know if anyone's ever broken something before, but when you go down, you hear the 
So, like, so what was you it? You broke, you tore it. ligaments. I tore you... ACL, MCL, PCL, fra- well, some of my meniscus, fractured a bone. So basically my knee was just hanging. Well, the bones yeah, are connected. Mad. I've, well, the, the, there's a video on um on Euro, on YouTube, which was from Eurosport. Yeah. Um, it's a bit mad. My mum watched it live. She didn't realise. She was just flicking through the channels and saw that I was, you know, on the floor. And then I called us because when my coach was there, firstly, when I was lying on the, the mat, a guy from the USA team, if you see me, runs over and he grabs my leg. And it's funny because my coach looks at him and they look at each other, then they look at me and I'm like, what's this conversation they're having? I don't understand. And then basically clicks it back in there and then. And I think that was their conversation they had because I'm guessing he's done it before and they trusted yeah. him. But thank God he did it because if he didn't, you'd have to have a whole operation to put it back into place and it'd be worse and whatnot, whatnot. So he clicked it back in. It was fine. The pain went. I stopped screaming. And then they wheeled me out and I was like, I just want to talk to my mum. I said, oh, I should do that. Are you fine? I just want to talk to my mum. You know, everyone's talking to you. My mum. Is anyone got a phone? So you called my mum? Huh? Is that, Quebec, yeah. So I didn't, want to, I didn't hear nothing. Yeah. I didn't see nothing. I was like, I need my mum on the phone now. You know, as a child, if anything, yeah. you always go to your mum first. Sorry to the dads out there, but it's true. You was like, mum, where are you? I need you. <laughs> and um, so I just, they gave me the phone. And but luckily it wasn't my phone. So for the coach, because obviously bills, <laughs> then well, international calls weren't the same. <laughs> and then he gives me the phone. I said, mum, so I broke my leg. She's like, oh, Ashley's like, what happened? I was just watching and you fell over. You didn't tell me you fell over. I said, mum, I just broke my leg. So what do you mean? Like, you didn't tell me that you fell over because I'll tell her every day how the meet went and we made it to the final. This, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. She's like, mum, I just broke my leg. Oh my God, you tell me I just watched this live. And obviously as any mum like to, to watch her daughter, hurt herself and then she's not there to go and save. That's like yeah. one of the few competitions she's never been to or she hasn't attended. And yeah, it was tough for her to just watch me, you know, just be ruled out. And I'm in a foreign country and Quebec, they speak French. My French is okay, but God mm. knows what medical terms they're using. I'm going to understand. Because I never forget, they ruled me off into the hospital. And obviously it's like it's white walls. It's always white walls. And then the lights on top of your head, you're just lying there on your back. And the nurses were just speaking in French. And I just thought, what? And then I cried again at the realisation of what is going on. So I cried when I was on the phone to my mum and cried when I was at the hospital. I'm not really much of a crying public. So I did it in the best possible times when not many people were there. Yikes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's um, your flags. Mm-hmm. GBF, uh, UK oh, yeah, flags well must have been vexed. Yeah, they weren't exactly happy. <laughs> But it was like, uh, it was my decision. So. Pretty much, basically, you have like a, a career threatening injury at the start of your career. Basically, they just just turning seventeen, mm. just started college with boys. <laughs> Yo, your mate. <laughs> I'm bad at it. Sorry, I went to all girls school, so then obviously when there was boys there, it was different. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I just literally went to a new college in a brand new area, not yeah. knowing much about, and then you know come back with a broken leg had to do with athletics because I didn't obviously see my potential back then. Mm. Yes, I'd won the World Juice, but it wasn't anything to me. You know, then actually before even the World Juice, remember I went to the World Junior Championships and I came fourth. Mm. And I believe deep down I could have got a medal there, but I feel like I panicked in the middle of the race. And then obviously next time around I thought, okay, I know what to do. I've been here before. That's how I was able to get this, well, just about win, shall I say, because at the same time as the girl that came second. But, you know, it's still then I still didn't know how good I was at tram- athletics. My yeah. mind was still on this trampolinist. I'm so good at trampolining. I know what I'm doing. I've done it for so long. I've not say mastered it, but I've done well at such a young age. So athletics, I mean, yeah, they were, must have been mad, but at that point I still don't think. And then like, how long did it take to recover from that? Um, when I was 07. I didn't make my first, when was 07? 2011. Where are we now? We're 2022. Oh. <laughs> you covered it. What's Daegu? 11. Daegu, yeah, Daegu World Championships. Yeah, that was my first ever uh, senior champs. Wow. So it was a long time. And in between then, it wasn't like a um, smooth sailing right? um, a couple of years. I did tear my hamstring all the way, tear my car. Yeah, because obviously so when you get injured, more... like a big injury, it yeah. affects your whole body. Mm-hmm. Um, And obviously, I guess that kind of... Would you say that kind of put you back? Uh, obviously, let me say it, it would have naturally yeah, so put you back ages a, bit, a lot. Is, yeah, so quiet. my natural age is, you know, and then um, my training age would be like three, four years behind, I think. Okay, because you've missed so much mm-hmm. training, because you missed maybe like, what, eight, nine, ten, almost like four years, three, almost four years. I think eight, nine, ten. Because 2008, 2009, oh, 2010. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you almost just like three, four years of mm-hmm. like, which is mad because obviously as a young athlete, like you're developing a lot in that 
time. Mm-hmm. How did you not quit? You know, a lot of people just said, you know what, let me just pack it in. I always question myself the same thing because I don't, to this day, I don't know how I'm still here. After all the madness that goes on in life, especially in sport, I don't know how I'm still here. But I feel the small milestones of like learning how to walk again. So you went back to do rehab. So British Athletics, like, well, I was grateful enough that they took me under their wing to do rehab. And there's like small bits here or there. Like that, just going to the track every day just helped yeah. get and making sure I could walk, then run, then jog, then lift weights. So all those small things, they just kept me there. And then it's like, it just turned into a blur. Now I'm just back to where I am. That how was sense. the mental side? Cause you, I know you, you did a piece once talking about the mental side, about how tough it was. Cause you kind of weren't in the best, maybe, I mean, you're young, you're a young lady, young girl mm. having a big injury. And then I guess it must have played a lot on your mind. I wish I um, document, documented a lot of it. Now when I look back at it, but I don't like to see myself in pain or hurt. And um, back then you see, obviously I was at my mom's house and I'd crawl down, the, or go to, wake up in the morning, hobble to the toilet, like crawl, then hobble down the stairs. And then I'll sit on this roof of an L-shaped sofa. And then I just lay there the whole day. They used to just leave food around me. My brother and sister and that would go to school. My mum would go to work. And I'd wait for them to come home, for them to collect back to my rubbish, feed me again, crawl upstairs, go to the toilet, and then go back to bed. It was like an actual routine. And I just basically just sunk into the sofa. You know that Homer Simpson when he gets out of the bed and that? Yeah, yeah. That was basically me. It was it was tough. Never really liked to go. I'm very much of an outgoing person. I love to have fun. Like, it's like my whole name is Asha Fun Philip. You know what I mean? There's a lot of excitement and banter involved. Like, I never, I'm the one to really stay at home. But so to be locked up in the house, not just be myself and not be around the people that I want to be around, it was tough. It wasn't the nicest of times. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Like, honestly, it was. No, that's what I said experience. about why did you not quit? Because especially when you're young, you know, you're, you're kind of like, whatever, like mm. you could have been like, oh, whatever, let me go to something else. I would say though, like I, just, it, like I just jumped straight back into it. So, mm. you know, I was just, it was just a lot of rehab for a number mm. of years. So it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, and it wasn't also taken serious. So I was still like, I went on tour at university, went to Salou, so Kingston University, Ooh, that was fun. Well, I'm <laughs> to now, so obviously. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, yeah, I still did a lot of fun things. Yeah. But I just trained. I just, but I think that was probably one of the best things. Not well, you went to, you, you were, uh, I mean, I guess if I, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously you went to, so you went to Kingston. Mm-hmm. Were you always planning to go to university? Because obviously if you turned pro a lot earlier in your flex career, maybe you wouldn't uh, have had the time. Yeah, not so. in this household. Not my mother's household. We As were, y'all we going yeah, to uni? We were going to. Okay. We had to do a little sum Okay. If okay. not, we'd have to. There was no, like, just stopping. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, but it's crazy how much you've achieved from that point because I'm mm-hmm. sure back then you didn't think, well, you tell me, but I can imagine you didn't think you're going to be, have no. two living medals no. and more. Never thought. Anyway, I mean, I was a bit gutted about 2012, but. Obviously, you missed 2012. Yeah, but I don't know if I would have. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like it, I'm grateful for that small injury. Yeah. Because I have a different side of empathy. Sympathy for people. I don't know. It's like that, that crazy sixteen-year-old girl has mellowed out, but into like I feel like I've blossomed in all the possible best possible ways. Like I'm probably the nicest person you'll ever meet. <laughs> <laughs> but I, mean, I don't know. But me as a character, I feel like yeah. it has built me. We'll try, like I'm stronger um, than what I believe. So no one can't tell me I can't do nothing because I know I can. Because I can't come back from that injury and then make it to where I am today with, with all my medals. So no one can't say, "Oh yeah, you, you haven't done ABCs." Well, oh, I have. I just broke my leg, dislocated all my knees, took how many, well, had two operations, had to do so much madness, like go through my degree, go through college, had to do all the stress that comes with it. So yeah, I'm stronger than, no one can't tell me how strong I am. So that's why I believe like, top tier me. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Let them know. That's what's <laughs> up. No, but it's important because we live in yeah. a time here where a lot of people will say they're confident. I really uh, could have given up. I could have. Mm. But you know what it is? It's my mom. As much as I don't give her credit, you might, you might want to give her flowers. But she definitely held me together. It was tough because she sees the, the the highs and the lows and she sees the worst as well. And like obviously I'm her baby who a wash belly in the Caribbean. So like I'm like the last born. And the, yeah, older sister, and older sister and brother. But to her, I'm like, oh my poor baby, what happened? Let me just rub your tummy and me feel better. And like there was not much she could do. She, like, she was um was it hopeless, is that the word you could yeah. say? And um, yeah, but she fought for me and she believed in me. And I don't, whereas I didn't believe in myself, she did. And I think that was the only reason why. Do you think a lot of, um, a lot of, 
like do you, to be a top 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 athlete like obviously to win Olympic medals mm-hmm. to be on the biggest stage on the podiums like how much of it is about your own self belief and how much of it is about other people believing in you because obviously a lot of a lot of the time obviously we'll talk about that self confidence and I think that's hundred percent the mm-hmm. case because you can't rely on no one else like mm-hmm. you know so I I know I I get how important that is but like how important is it to have a team of people around you as well. Um, I always bring it back to that energy bus, you know. Um, if you don't, like you're always shearing, like shearing, steering mm-hmm. your bus, ship, whatever you want to call it, you know, car, bicycle, you're in the driver's seat, basically. And you need to make sure you've got the best possible people on your team with you. So whoever's the, your wing mirror, your mechanics, like anything a bus needs, you need those people around you to help you basically on your journey. Whether you like them or not, it's more of a trust thing. Mm. And are they doing their job back there? If they're not, you have to ask them to leave or you get someone new. And I feel, it took me a while to understand that. And I think that was down to sports therapy that I, used, well, I still do take, which I think is amazing. I believe everyone should take therapy, whether what job you do. Because mm. um, I feel like as human beings, we take on a lot of stress and we don't offload it. We just feel like we can handle it ourselves and we really know you can't. Fair enough, it says you came to well by yourself, but you still needed help from somebody to get here. So it is about building your village, um, <clears throat> having the right people. And I feel like when I started talking to my psychologist, she made me feel like I do have the reins. And before I used to sit back all the time and I used to let someone else make my decisions. It's like, no, nah, she's a big grown girl now. You have to learn how to this by yourself. Mm. And I think that's when I realised I needed to put people on my bus. I had to drive. Yes, they could advise me to turn left or turn right. But again, end of the day, I make the last and final decision. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a very big and strong mental framework to have, you know. I, would you say it's take like is it taking time to kind mm-hmm. of get to that point? Because I think a lot of young athletes of today are probably yeah. not 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 thinking like that. Some of I do struggle though. Yeah, I'm like, mum, sit in the front seat, and I, I don't, I don't, I'm too scared. I can't help me, help me. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's more about. <clears throat> sorry, if you speak to people, if you get all the knowledge that you can first, and then make a decision. Sometimes you've got to take risks as well whether they're good or bad, but at least you know you've taken them because then you can look back and say, okay, cool, now I know what to do next time or now I could have done this better. So sometimes I feel like you still need, not say you need to fail, you still need to, you know, just, I don't know, maybe hit a dead end to realise, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. It was this what I should have done. But even then it's just, you know, you just take a different route and you still get to the, hopefully get to the destination that you want. But it is about having the right people because I realised that you just got people catching dead weight in the back for no reason. Sometimes people just there for the party part. But again, you could, as my off season, I can pick you up <laughs> when the time comes. But right now, I don't need you here. But you've got your friends in the distance that um, are always going to be there for you. The ones that understand your sport as well, because they know that how bad I am when it comes to responding. But they know I'm always going to be there for them if they need me. If not, I will be over the phone. Like I'm not, I'm loyal because I know the people near to me are loyal. And I try my best to keep my circle small. Don't get me wrong, I've not failed with certain friends, but at the end of the day, how else am I going to learn? Yes, it might be the hard way, but we live, we live and learn. But at the end of the day, I feel I've got a decent amount of people around me that I can say God has blessed me with. When people say, if I don't make it in sport or do anything in life, I know I've got the world's best family. They are there for me through thick and thin. I can call them and say one word to them and be like, okay, where are you? And then that's it. They'll drop everything just to come and save me. And um, yeah, I've got a decent agent. He's all right right now. But <laughs> come on. Oh, but no, honestly, like I do believe I've got, you know, a good bus. It's shiny. It's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, shiny. A1. Mm. It's a Bentley bus. It's a Bentley bus. Nah, that's deep. I think, um, so, because obviously that process of like having a big injury, missing so many years, mm-hmm. missing London, obviously, so we're at Olympic Park, missing London 2012, which... No, mm, yeah, I wasn't fit. I don't think I was fast enough to run. Mm. But as in, but when I say missing is if like, if you'd had had an injury, yeah, you yeah, would have probably been, been yeah, for yeah, sure. Like, you know, my trajectory was going yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, so earlier in the series, you sat down with Jody mm-hmm. Williams, and Jody was talking about, um, you know, obviously she was being mm-hmm. like pushed up as like yeah, 2012, yeah, 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 yeah. and then obviously she had a big injury, and it all kind yeah. of came crashing down. Um, so like, I guess similarly, you know, you kind of had that young stardom. Obviously, yours mm-hmm. crashed down a bit earlier than hers yeah. did, um, but. Snap, both of you have come back. I and feel like therapy should have come in then. Mm. Don't get me wrong, my mum and aunts are qualified. Yeah. But they're qualified still my mom. therapist. Yeah. Okay. But, um, excuse me, it's more, yeah, so your parents, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. even tell them 
50% because you just wanted to get off your back. Like, oh, just leave me alone. But now I have it now. It's like probably one of the best things ever. So I wish I probably had that. Maybe I, then again, I probably wasn't even open to it at the time because mm-hmm. it's still a lot to offload to someone that you don't know and that doesn't know you. But it technically is one of the best ever things. They're not here to judge you. You just speak. They listen. They question you. They make you think. And again, I walk away making the decisions for myself. Like they just, they don't help, they help you in the direct yourself into going the right way. So me being like, it's like a friendship-ish. That she's a friend, but a therapist. Yeah. So me telling you, I'll say, Deji, don't turn left, don't turn left. And really you might want to turn right. It might, right might be good for you. Why do you think people are scared to, to go to therapy though? Because, and I don't know whether, and you, okay, you tell me like, uh, especially in the black community, mm-hmm. sometimes, when you start saying things like therapy, you think you're you know, going to shrink or you're yeah, crazy. Shrink. Or just think you're kind of weak. Like yeah. you don't want to seem, um, a lot of times people don't want to seem like they're weak or more more than that, they don't say like I've got a problem. Yeah. It's mad. We do so much strengthening of our bodies and yeah. of our, yeah, everything you else. Right. You want to look good. You want to do all these things, but you don't want to get your mind right. And the mm. mind is the most powerful thing that you I have. I mean, we see it all the time. Like, I mean, obviously there's a big thing like uh, South of Power. Mm-hmm. Jamaican sprinter guy like in his peak he was the fastest man in the world by a distance mm-hmm. but for some reason when he got to the major champs he was, wasn't able to deliver it now after a while I thought is that a performance thing like mm-hmm. maybe he had a bad race but then it started happening consistently and I thought okay well actually it must be a mental barrier mm-hmm. I don't know Saf personally so Saf you're watching this maybe we can have you on you can, you can chat about <laughs> it but it looked like it was a, mm. a mental thing so like I completely understand that the mental game is well they say what 80 80 percent mental yeah um and i that sounds strong but when you realize that if your mind's not right you you might not have to get out of bed Mm -hmm. if your mind's not right so So you can do everything you can eat the right foods you can do that stuff but if your head isn't in the right position you ain't going nowhere it's going to be stuck like stagnant that there's no there's no point me trying to eat all the salads in the world me trying to do all the hardest fitness but then my head is like nowhere near right and your head, you needs to be the most important thing because that's, you know, that's the start line. You have to wake up in the morning. You're train the way you train your body is where you train your mind. Basically, it's the same thing. And you've got to learn. How to, don't say it's going to be easy. The heart, the mind is mindset is the hardest one, but it's the most important one. Because mm. my mind could be ten out of ten, but yeah, I ain't done half the sessions. But I bet you I perform better just because my mind said no, I'm ready and I'm going to go. Well, actually, I mean that's a good point because you are kind of known for. Um, <laughs> bringing it out the bag when it matters most, especially like, so in the flicks, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like people have um, maybe doubted you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've always been doubted my whole entire career, though, to be fair, just because of my injury and where I've come from. But it's like, well, time after time, I keep doing the same thing, but yet people are still going to have their opinion. But I said, you know, I just accept it. I'm not going to be everyone's favourite. I'm not going to be everyone's best friend. And I feel like when I accept that for myself, that I, I'm not here to make you that person happy or mm. you like me. I'm here to for myself, my family, my bus, my energy bus that I have. Um, yeah, so that's what I learned to just ignore all that nonsense because I'm not. I was not put in this world to please you. So I thought, you know what? As long as my mind's right, I'm good, sir. So thank you for your opinion. Thank you very much for your negativity. But I'm good now. So you can just keep that in the corner, and I'm going to say I've got I've got winning. I've got things to do. But you're the moaning about me or thinking your, your opinion matters to my life. I'm like, I'm busy. I've got things to do. That's my mindset. I like that mentality because you really can't care what people think. Mm-mm. Not in this world. Yeah. In this Instagram but, world. But life. actually, this is the thing, yeah, with you. And so, I, I'm, obviously, a flex is a sport that I know well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm aware that our viewers don't know a flex, may not know a flex as well as like we do. So I'm trying not to go get all excited and get into the details. But, I do get the sense sometimes that people like, like you said, oh, Asha doesn't train. Asha, do, <laughs> Asha doesn't like running. Asha can't train. Asha can't do that. Stuff. Uh, and it's true. I don't like training. I don't like to train. I don't like nothing, but I do it anyway because my coach tells me. I do what my coach says. So people come moan, I can't do that with you. No, <laughs> Asha doesn't like, I don't like it. No, I'm still that 16 year old girl back in the day. No, I don't. I don't like going outside in the cold. I don't like being out in the rain. I don't like being in the snow. I don't like anything. I don't know why I like track and field. I get to travel. <laughs> I get to meet nice people. And that's the genuine truth. Mm. But I do love the sport. But what drives you then? Because obviously you don't like training. But the thing is, you, and I think it's fair to say, like, um, you've, with your injury, mm-hmm. but then, like you say, in you went to Rio 2016, mm-hmm. you got an Olympic bronze medal, the 4-1 relay team. 
uh, got the team off to an amazing start. You since that point, you just went on this mad run of just collecting medals. Like every, in fact, every event that an athlete can have, I think you got a medal from. And so every event that an athlete can no world indoors, I ain't got that yet. Compete to you got a medal. A world indoors. Okay, well, there's one coming up. Sad. Well, when's when's the next world the indoors? Is canceled, okay. So we'll see. Anyway, you will go collect the world indoor medal mm-hmm. as well. But basically, every pretty much every event that you could uh, go to as an athlete, you've collected a medal from. So. I I find it I always found it a bit funny when people like make those like <laughs> comments about you, but that you you've done a lot more than a lot of people in the sport, and you're doing it. Um, you made a little like comment on your age earlier, but you're 31, mm-hmm. and you're running. You're still like you're 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 like it's not people like to make a big thing about age, but. Well, firstly, hold touch Shelly and Fraser, yeah, yeah. who's 36 in Big December, baby too, then and she's just... running with a baby. Mm-hmm. Well, you must be like two years old now, and she's running the, the fastest times mm. she'd ever run in her life. So I don't think age is as Definitely much not. as a thing as they... Serena Williams just finishing off. Hold touch Serena. I think Roger Federer went on until like he was 40. It's about the women there, sorry. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hold tight. Hold tight the women, though. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. you. Hold mm-hmm. tight the women. And you're doing it. Yeah. You're doing it for them big. I'm just, I think your fetish just get started, to be honest. I hear that. Mm. Is it how much of like that longevity in a career, that must be a mental thing as well? Definitely. Cause, but then sometimes some people's bodies break down before. Mm-hmm. It's all about how your body is and how your mind is. And if they're both in sync, then you've, you've still got time. And if you want to, because some people want to walk away. But well, what keeps that hunger? Time. Because like I said, you've... Okay, she is a new so champion. Tokyo, so you went to Rio, you got a mm-hmm. Olympic bronze, you you know, you got a, like I said, you got a world championship medal, you got a European 60, you got a European medal outdoor, you got a bunch of medals. Mm-hmm. What is like making you say, no, I'm, I'm here, I'm going for the next one? I just want to do better for myself, individually as a track and field athlete, as, just, as well as just making sure you know, okay, th- is this the fastest I can really go? If I can say this is the fastest I can go, then I'll know I'll walk away. But if I know there's still something more to give and go out and get, then I'll continue until my body will and my mind say that's enough. Yeah, but and you made a big change as well because you out here living in Miami. I know, 305. 305, yeah. nuts. <laughs> so what, so you, you uh, all your career, you've been London-based, mm-hmm. training with like coaches. I went to Loughborough for a bit. Yeah. That was an experience. Not for you. Obviously you went to Kingston, but you went to Loughborough to train up there. Yeah, I am yeah. not. I'm a city girl. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> but basically always been here and then You've so you now live basically half of the year in Miami. Mm-hmm. That's how is that? Back in the E-10. how's Miami? It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when people said you're going to Miami, it was like, I should go to Miami. She's gonna be partying, she's gonna be on South Beach. That's what everyone assumed. Again, people assume people thinking Ash can't survive in there. Yeah, she could be no, in no, South Beach down, living her life. But they don't know me. There's people that don't know me. Me, I'm a person. If you take me out to eat, I'm going to every restaurant. You know, you've got your best restaurants at home, you've got food at home. Yeah, I yeah. do. But I like, I'm outside. I want to eat what's outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's just where my madness goes on. It's just going to nice restaurants, eating good food. Yeah. It's not about the party in half time because firstly, I need like a certain type of music. So when I go to the clubs and end up playing it, I'm bored. I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. I just go for the vibes and maybe just to look good and dress nice. But same to a restaurant now. Oh, you got me. That's I'm it. there. And to be fair, like like we said, you can't do what you've done if you're a party animal. Like, I don't think my mum always said to me, Asha, by the time you turn 30, 40, whatever, they're going to be playing the same music that you've had back in the day. Every time you go to a club, they're always playing a throwback. I tell you now, there's certain songs that we used to hear at Kingston University in the clubs in McCluskey's, whatever. Oh, she, they're playing the exact same um, songs we're playing now. And because we want to hear the old schools of the 90s, the 80s, and that stuff, we just want to hear it. So, what am I worried about now? We'll no. be looking good by then. I'll pl- have more money to enjoy myself by the time it comes anyway. Hey, look, and also the weather in Miami is crazy. Yeah, it's, oh, it's not humid though. I mean, you're pretty much like all round. I mean, you're with, Sunshine, we call it yeah. winter. Yeah. So, isn't it? It makes sense seeing mm-hmm. as you were complaining yes. about the cold. <laughs> now it's Yeah, like, but they've got different type of rain out there. Yeah. They've got lightning. You have to come off the track. Those days I don't mind because if it lightnings and I haven't got to train. Yeah. Oh no, the lightning. But it's inside. mad to be, to <laughs> be training in, even the training in Miami. I mean, yeah, what a, what a that's a what a blessing, man. That's mm-hmm. mad. You know when you think about it, like I know. You, yeah, for me, East End. What am I doing out there? It's crazy. Miami. Yeah, it's, weird. it's mad. It's weird. No, it's good. Um, but like one of the things I've noticed about you as well is 
I would say, and especially like, let's, let's talk a bit about this. So mm-hmm. yeah, 20, um, I think it was like late 2018, you left, the, you funny? sent me a voice note, said oh. Dej, let me cut a long story short with Dej, looking to make a few changes, looking for some management options, et cetera, et cetera. They'd like maybe help me out, you know, have a look. Yeah, but and you have see. to say because every year I think we'd always meet up. Every yeah. Every like then, so oh, let's have a you know, because I don't see you for the year. Mm. Let's sit down, have a chat, blah blah blah, and I'd ask your opinion on certain things. And I'm sure I asked you like the year before as well. Mm. You did. But then I, I just kind of left it. We didn't really press on it. And then this time I was like adamant, I'm leaving my agency. Yeah, I mean, so Asha sent me worse than Dej. I'm changing up my agent. I need a new like commercial management team new manager, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Can you help me find a new one? Mm-hmm. That's what the line was. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was driving my car and I was like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. Because at that point I was just thinking like I'd had enough. I was like, I had this burning fire. I need to do my own thing. I need to do my own thing. I need to build something. And I thought, man, this is crazy. I, said, I remember leaving that voice and I was like, yo. And I was a bit nervous actually because mm-hmm. I've known you for, for a while on like a friend level, but not, not, it's never been business. Even when we talked about maybe anything business, like I was always very mindful that you, you know, you have manager that I don't want to be like imposing or anything like that. So I was actually a little bit nervous. So you know when you're nervous, you make a little half joke, half joke. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, of course I can help find some options, but I'm doing this because I'm, I'm doing it like I'm holding my voice. No. <laughs> Back and then we didn't have to swipe up and hold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, I can, yeah, we can look for some options. Mm-hmm. Or I also got doing this anyway myself. Like, maybe we can jump in. We, we, you you join the You never said to me on the phone. I said on voice note. No. I found it to your house. Yeah. You said before? Yeah. I sw- that's why you were at the house. Oh. I left you also saying, yo, I can okay. help you find some options. We can do that. Or I can just do it. And I was like, what? You're like, ah. Are you sure? But the thing is, what you actually said was, okay. Because I think you've already known that I've, you know, I've, I've been working mm-hmm. in my, uh, in like a sports business capacity for many years, doing different things. Hence why we always have a catch up. But I think you were probably like, I think what you said to me was, okay, this is cool, but friends and business. Mm. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, well, two things that can affect that, money and communication. And if we get them things unlocked, it's cool. So I remember... Um, spoke- our first little... What was our first little mishap? Oh, no, nah, not even I'm that. Not there yet, I didn't want to get there. No, we should. You want to? Yeah, we should buy it. I, I don't know. But finish what you're saying, sir. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> long story short, I remember sitting at home. I spoke to the guys who were sitting at home, making up this strategy plan about how Asha can... Because the thing about you at the time, I was like, man, you've like, you won so many medals. Okay, mm-hmm. you were one time Olympic medalist then. Sorry. Like, but, you know, you then mm-hmm. obviously got another one. Um, but you'd got so much. And I didn't really see that much thing like, mm-hmm. happening outside of the sport for you. You, you obviously used to be working with Nike, uh, mm-hmm. but by then you were on like a really like reduced Nike contract, mm-hmm. reduced. And I was thinking, this doesn't, it's not adding up. Like why, mm-hmm. how can like an athlete with her credentials, credentials not be out there more? Um, and so then uh, there's definitely opportunity here. So I, you know, we're going to, there's probably going to be another episode, maybe where you're talking to me or something and we can, really unpack this whole thing but I would definitely say a big shout out to you because you talk about catalyst mm-hmm. yeah Asha Phillip was a major catalyst of helping this all come about so um yeah big flowers for that 2013 being a pro athlete and 2020 2021 2022 like mm-hmm. doing it nowadays I think there's a big difference in how athletes need to move and how mm-hmm. they need to like there's a certain old school mindset that when I say old school, I'm talking like 10 years ago, that mm-hmm. I just don't think it's going to work for athletes of today. If you're looking to really propel. Mm-hmm. Um, and like to kind of compress what I'm saying, I feel like you uh, are a really good example of somebody who you came up in a certain generation, but you're still obviously still got some time to go. But like, I especially I've seen a sort of big change in you basically. Mm-hmm. From like, um, I wouldn't say, 
I would, I'm not saying entitlement, right? You know, in, entitlement, in sense, I'm not saying like athletes feel like, oh, well, I've done this, so I should get this. Mm -hmm. But I saw more of a like, I need to work. Mm -hmm. I need to work, not just in my sport, I need to work out of my sport. Mm -hmm. I need to go after things out of my sport. And like, even with the decision to move from Nike to Gymshark, I saw that as, right, I'm going to take a risk. Mm -hmm. The decision to change agency to a new agency, I'm mm -hmm. going to take a risk. Like, I felt like you were just like trying to grab control of your situation. Am I, am I? Yeah, I think I had a little experience, I don't really get to detail with it, um, but there was things where someone maybe like just, I don't know, just jump rather than just, you know, dip my foot in. I always dip my foot in. This is when I probably was still struggling with my bus and made someone else drive all the time. But I thought at this point, why not? I've got nothing to lose at this point. Nothing. Either I take this leap and try something new or just stay stagnant. And I always know I thrive better when I'm in uncomfortable positions. When I say it, it's like you learn how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I do that. I put myself in a situation. So even moving to Miami, I didn't know anybody there. What business do I have out there? Other than living my best life, but what business do I really have in Miami? It's like, I needed to just be uncomfortable. I work better. It's like, it's fight or flight mode. And you gotta know how to just navigate things. Okay, how does this work? How does that work? And I feel when I'm in those situations, I perform better. Is that what you got a child? I'll never forget this, right? My niece, um, <laughs> I was with her. I don't, so I don't like, the, I've, I've learned to tolerate dogs now because everyone around me has dogs. But um, she was playing with one dog at one point and this dog was bigger than her, kind of. And all I know is she was running to me, like, Artie, Artie. I figured, what just happened? And the dog was chasing her. At this point, I was ready to just run with her, you know, so let's just run. <laughs> but then you had to know, I said, oh no, what can I do? How do I save her? And it's like, you know, I had to just say, don't worry, just play with you and like just stand firm and calm the dog and calm her down. So it's like your mind had to calculate what's going on. And I mm -hmm. feel like in those situations when I'm panicking, like I'm not comfortable, what am I doing? How do I do this? You just, there's a sense of calm in those moments. You've got to learn how to find it. Same with in the relay, you've got, 30 meters, but it goes by in literally seconds. And you have to calculate when this person runs off, how am I going to hand the baton? And I'll tell you now, you've got the matrix running through your brain, like all these numbers calculating. What do I say? What do I do? You've got to learn how to get this baton across. And that's basically how I operate. I operate better in those situations. So me just diving in, giving you a chance, giving Gymshark a, a different opportunity, I thought, why not? Why, so, what, what do I accomplish by sitting still? Yeah, yeah. So it's like you're more composed. Like yeah. less um, like composed, but also I guess also taking more risks. Mm -hmm. I would say because when you think too much, yeah, that's when the negativity starts to creep in. When they're all like the bits, oh, should I do this? Oh, this isn't gonna work. Oh, uh, no, we ain't got time for that. It's either yes or no. But do you think athletes of today? So when I say today, like athletes in like modern day now, need to be thinking about not necessarily taking risks for risk's sake, but thinking like, well, how can I elevate my career? Because one thing I didn't mention earlier, you are now a, and this is what I respect as well, you said, you said about maybe 18 months, maybe even two years ago, you are like, you know what, I, I want to start doing things outside of the sport. I want to mm -hmm. start being in positions that I can start to change certain narratives around sport and this kind of stuff. And here you are now, you're a board member on the British <laughs> Athlete Commission. <laughs> Um, which is mad. It's crazy. Yeah, you're doing my a um, you're a, you're on the athlete commission European for European one. athletics. Yeah, and I know you have got more, more things to come as well. Well, that was more what's the shift? Like, what is it? Why why are you looking at mm. trying to do more than just I feel run track? When I was doing when I was younger, the different sports, mm -hmm. I was always left, right, center. There was always every day was something different. So I never really had time to just sit still. It was always I was itching to do something else. And then when you realise you just give your whole life to one thing, um, don't get me wrong, it's still beautiful. I still um, get to enjoy it. So when we travel, it kind of breaks up the moment. But when you go to the same place every day, I feel like I just get bored. And I feel like that's when I start to lose the love in certain things. So I thought, okay, what can I do to educate myself outside of the sport so my brain is still ticking? That's why I started to learn a second language. I just tried my best to just do different things that wasn't track. So when I come to the track, I can enjoy it. Mm. So I don't try to bring my drama to the track. There's no need to do that because you just want to go there, train, the and leave. The track. But you just want to, you just want to, I don't know, entertain myself outside. When I've got all this free time, you're just constantly thinking about how can I do this track, track, track. I feel like, oh, that's jarring. I can't do that. But um, I just remember, but, but that that point about um, I was making about like athletes for today. Like, what would you say is the key things that athletes of today need to think about? Because just you... keep their brain going. There's no need to just like your life doesn't stop just because you have one sport. Like you just, just navigate things differently. So you don't stay out late because one, one late night is just going to mess you up for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. But you could just, it's just 
think of different things. There's no need to just focus so much on the sport. It will drive you insane because sport has extremely beautiful highs, but the lows are sickening. They are horrible. They're not nice and people struggle. So it's just like, how do you balance it out? It's like finding your hobbies. Do what you like, love to do. Before you did track and field, what, who were you before? What did you study? Mm. I mean, I studied drama. I wish I could continue to either do acting or be behind the scenes or do whatever, but I just, I can't do that because that's more of an on-site thing. And obviously I travel too much to do it. But yeah, I could read my books. I could go out and watch plays when I can um, and maybe write plays. I, was, I thought I was good at writing plays at one point. So if I wanted to, I could do that stuff on the side. Yeah. yeah. So there's no need for me to just focus so much on one thing when I know I've got to learn to enjoy my hobbies at the same time. So that's what athletes need to do. Just let them breathe a bit because this sport can be so consuming. You know, I hear that. And I think... Mm. Um, we saw <clears throat> so obviously Anthony Joshua had his fight yeah and like one thing I was and so he had his second rematch of Usyk and that obviously everyone talks about his big outburst at the end yeah. but one thing I saw is like I, you know, I actually thought this kind of thing actually I thought man no doubt this guy has been dedicated mm -hmm. to winning this fight yeah you know he has this big rematch mm -hmm. to win the world championship again he fell short of it and then he had this really strange eruption like he's mm -hmm. acting in a different way and I did think to myself, you know what? Maybe he actually has been so dialed in. Mm -hmm. He's not been able to, he's not let off steam in other ways. In the public though. In the public. Because as much as you don't, we will smile and walk off and you interview me after a race and I'll be like, okay, that went well, it didn't go well. And I keep my composure. But sometimes as an athlete, you just can't. So the other day when the baton didn't get around in the relay, I was just, I was fuming, but I kept my mouth shut because I knew yeah. if I open my mouth now, if this interview lady said one bad word mm -hmm. to me, I could have just killed her. So context, people. European Championships in yes. Munich. The baton didn't get around. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. But either way, had they asked me the wrong thing at the wrong, that time, I could have just gone insane. Mm. But I knew, lucky for me, I had three other girls that could speak for me. So I just kept quiet. Because if, again, if you're going to ask me something, I could just have a, that massive outburst and it's just not that we don't have them as athletes it's just you don't get to see them half the time because we're training so hard we're training so hard just on under 11 seconds we'll try our best because i haven't done it yet but it's just we're working so hard for that imagine 11 seconds yeah and you i mean get it's, one shot it. it's tough like people obviously you know so much as i'm like oh snap you know we're talking you're a gym shark athlete you're board member here you're you know your your coat you know your training well, groups athlete. now in miami but mm. it's what i'm saying this is just that's just like the highlights. Like underneath yeah. all of that, it's a lot of dedication. The, stress, uh, the first week of me moving to Miami, that was stressful. Yeah, it's a big I, could, I, say, I'm not I mean, it's, a big, it's, like, it's like moving to not any like anybody moving job and moving to another yeah, country. It was, it was and tough. also like the securities that athletes have. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it's, it's risky. Like mm -hmm. what happens after track? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What happens then? So it's definitely good that you're thinking about but I thought, It's not even like I think about because of what I want to do afterwards. I've still got a number of years, depending on how much I want to go on. Mm -hmm. Not saying my body, has, well, my body has to, you know, marry the same thing, but it's more, where do, when do I want to stop? But I'm doing this because I just want to do something different. Mm -hmm. I want to enjoy my sport. I want to enjoy just this part that yeah. I have right now. And that is my sport. I'm going on a really big, like, I'm just, I'm going up. I mean, what's the words? I'm enjoying it more. And I think that is due to having my therapy, having um, my little side, not say side horses, but you know, my board stuff. I always said I wanted to educate myself in a different way. Whether it's like go back to school or do different things. I just wanted my mind to do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wrote on my list, I wanted to, well, actually a board member, was it really a thing? I don't know. I just dipped my toe in it. My friend said, I shall do this. And yeah, I'm here now. But now I, I realise I do like it. And mm. I want to do more. I want to add more to my rest. I don't want to just do two. I want to do three, four, five. I'm a black woman from East London who's now on different boards. When did we ever see this happen? Me? I never it's saw true. a thing. It's but true. now I just want to do more. I want to, I don't know, put myself out there. Put myself in more uncomfortable positions because I know I strive better in them. Yeah. And this is the way to do it. Come on. So I'm on the way. So that's two hey. down. Watch by the end of next year, I must add the next one. Yeah. Yes. No, but it's good. Honestly, like, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm gas for you. I'm, I'm proud of what you're doing. It's, it's, I'm very inspired by being around um, athletes because, like, the mentality that, that you have and mm -hmm. the, like, even like the gateway athletes themselves that have is is so driven. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's everything is next year is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe you know you can have a job and okay, apart from like a redundancy or something, you can be like, okay, cool, I can yeah. stay in my job for X time yeah, and I'm going to yeah, get yeah. this and I'm going to make this much money mm -hmm. and I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. 
when you're an athlete, you don't you have don't that kind of security. Mm-mm. Every year you're fighting for yeah. that next Because you're forgetting, Jack, I feel people don't understand. Everyone thinks, oh, you've been to this race or you've been here there, you must get paid so much. No, it doesn't work like that. Mm. Some of the stuff you do out there for free. Some of my races in America, I was paying for my own accommodation, paying for everything for them to get cancelled just mm-hmm. whoever. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I lose out on that. And it's not like it was the um, the race, what do you call them? The race people. The race organisers. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it was down to the weather. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So we can go up there and we can lose a lot of money. Like I just moved my whole life to America. Do I have enough funds to do it? But in my mind, I have this way of thinking is how am I going to afford it? So I can't afford it. How am I going to do it? So I tell myself, if I want to be where I want to be or get to where I want to be, how am I going to do it? What are the steps? Who do I have to talk to? Who do I have to, what book do I have to read? Who, what podcast I have to listen to? Do you know what I mean? I've got to figure out how do I get there? I can't just say, oh no, I can't afford it. So I'm not doing it. I'm not telling myself that. Because if I want that pair of shoes, I'm going to buy them pair of shoes. So if I want this in life, how am I going to do it? Because I'm going to go and get there. Whether I get it or not, or at least I got so close, at least I know I tried. Because trying is one thing that I realised, if you don't even do then how would you know when you get there? So me, obviously, I let say a little regret when it comes to trampolining because I didn't finish the way I wanted to finish. I made that final. I made the individual final, but was not able to perform there. I didn't even leave it. I'm not even a team at all. I was angry about that. But do you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was tough. So I want to know, whatever I can control, I'm going to control and yeah. do my best at it. It's a very, very big... I wish more people had this mentality. If a lot it, of people had this mentality... Gross, I know, not, yeah. When people say like, oh, how do I think this way? Maybe because I just... Unless I gave up on the... I just... I didn't want to deal with drama anymore. I realised drama can't enter my room, my house. I didn't even like arguing. And I'm a, I'm a... I mean, if I want to, I could choose violence if I want to, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, if I want... I just... I just want to be happy. Yeah. And I feel my happiness is the key. And I feel I can let drama into my life and I can entertain it. But maybe because if I'm bored, I will do it. I won't let it last long because <laughs> I feel like I ain't got time for this. Yeah. But I really want to choose focus and just driven. It's my family, my nieces and nephews, people that are important to me. I'd rather choose that than nonsense. So if I don't feel like it's healthy for me, the door is closed, honey. Nini says the are door you, Are you is scared closed. of, are you, so, so you, by the way, you sound like you're on a mission and I love that. I'm not scared of nothing. I, yeah. just, I don't have the time. You want me to deal with someone else's feelings or someone else trying to ruin my energy. I don't have, there's no time for it. So you've come to upset me. Oh, you, I actually don't like that. A, B and C. All right, cool. That's a you problem. <laughs> That's not me. I'm happy with what I'm doing today. I'm happy with whatever. Thank you for your opinion. Thank you for your negativity. But I'm good now. No, but you're right. It's growth because like we were talking about Shelly Ann Fraser mm-hmm. earlier and, you know, Shelly and everyone like, she, she's such an amazing role mm-hmm. model. Not just for, 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 for black women, mm-hmm. not just for women, but for like in general in a sporting yeah. sense. And I'm I'm happy that she's getting that applause now because yeah. she deserves it. But um yeah, I I don't know her, but again, I can see that she probably is giving the same vibes of what you're giving. Like she's focused. Mm-hmm. She left her long time coach. Why are you leaving your coach? Exactly. And she's gone on to do even better things when than she wants to her On coach. the outside are telling you why would you are you living do you see life through my eyes? Are mm. you walking in my shoes? Do you understand what I'm going through? So then you don't have an opinion. You can advise, you can speak to me and ask questions, but you can't tell me or uh, like say, oh, you should be doing this. Because you, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what when I go home and I close the doors and I'm sitting at home drinking my cup of tea and even if people can afford to have tea and inflation. But you know what I mean? If I'm just minding my own business, I don't have time for someone else's opinion mm-hmm. to ruin mine. And me as a friend, now I've learned that. That's due to friends that I have had because I've told them A, B, and C, and it's blown up in neither my face or theirs. So I thought, I'll never do that. I'm still good friends with these people, but it's the fact that we had those conversations. Again, communication is key. If I, I can't, no one can't, I can't tell you, like I said before, to turn left or turn right. I could advise you, if you go right, this will happen. If you go left, this also will happen. So which one do you think is best for you? Now I'll make you make the decision, but I will only support you in either way. But those are the people I have around me, people that will support me in any decision that I make. If it goes wrong, Asha, don't worry about it. We'll find our way back. It went right, Asha, great decision. So proud of you. That's what I need. I haven't got someone to tell me, oh, Asha, I don't think you, I don't think what? Ah, excuse me. Thank you. But I'm okay. I don't need your opinion, especially the people that don't know you. Why would you listen to some freaking Billy from down the street? Why would you do that? Let's not waste our time or energy. I do this a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, you see my dad, right? Oh my days. He always got something stupid to send me on Instagram. Don't even know why he's on there, but he just wants to watch videos and send me something and like, oh, I should watch this. If you do this exercise, it, it will do what? My brother, if you drink this, it will do. Go away. Are you my nutritionist? Are you my trainer? No. Are you qualified? That's the thing. Are you qualified? 
I don't think so. Asha always tells me everyone needs to stay in the lane. Oh, I, I do say that. You I say do. she was everyone needs to stay in the lane. Yes. So you don't need. Uh, you don't. Well, let me use me as an example because it's not going to be drama. <laughs> like I don't need to be going into areas of Asha's life which are out of my jurisdiction. So this year, so mm. you are my agent. You you deal with that. That you're mm. good at that. I hired you in that sense to because I believe you can do what you can do. Mm. But you try to tell me, oh, actually, maybe you should do this to your training. I said, excuse me, mm-hmm. are you now my coach? I haven't said that, by the way. Just, no. so, just clarifying. <laughs> Man's not involved at that, do you know what I mean? I'm just like, here. Yeah. But yeah, you can't <laughs> tell me, actually, I think you should do extra 250s or 300s or whatever, whatever. Mm. Not knowing what 100. I'm, and I, the thing, yeah. and I know, I know for a fact there's, there, there will be management out there who will be all up in the mm-hmm. business because, yeah, naturally, we know that a higher performance mm-hmm. could lead to more commercial opportunities and so on. But like, we should be just supporters mm. of what you're yes. doing. You ask me a question, Advisors. you ask me for advice, you ask yeah. me for support. I'm here for it, but I'm not going to be telling you. Hey, like yeah. even you going Thank to mommy, you. that was a, that's you. Mm-hmm. Like that's you. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying. So, um, like there's no need to stay in your lanes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's stay a use- there because I will definitely put you back in your place. But one, Most absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You know. 100. The only one I struggle with is my mom. She just, she just. <laughs> no, but you, you know what it is? I think you need to have that kind of resilience and that kind of like mm-hmm. drive. I think that's, it's such a good trait to have, especially in yeah. an individual sport. And the reality is, you know, sometimes um, athletes can feel very nervous about finishing and stuff. But you know what? Like the mindset you have now, you take mm-hmm. that and apply that to any endeavor, mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. You want to go back to education. Mm-hmm. You want to, you want to, Go work for a company. You want yeah. to start a company. If you got that mindset of mm-hmm. growth, hey, you'll, you'll be but good. But obviously, you got to learn how to control what you can control. Hundred percent. I can only control what I think, what I do, like my mindset, how I feel, my emotions. I control it all. But this, I can't control someone else's emotions. I can't control like so my coach telling me what to do. I can't control whatever, whatever. I just accept it. But what I can control in any situation, I will do my best at. And that's, I think that's the most powerful thing because people feel like, oh, they want to try to do avian systems. No, no, no. Just do what you, what's in your power, deal with that. Because mm. you can't control what's happening. So I'm going to race with seven other people. I can't control what they're doing in the race. I know what I'm doing. So it's my focus. It's my, you know, stay there. Stay in my box. Stay 100. In my as much as I tell everyone to get in their lanes, I stay in mine. And I can control what I can control. I can't control the weather. I can't control, you know, the prices of whatever these days. But I control, okay, how am I going to manage it? And that's what I do. With. That's the sort. I mean, I feel like you've got with this 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 mission you're on. I thought mm-hmm. you're gonna make things happen. Oh, I already know. Obviously, I'm on the inside, out the gateway gang. Um, <laughs> and I I I see there's a there's a lot of growth, mm-hmm. even from when I mean we met probably I don't know, fourteen, thirteen. I don't know how old how old we were. We were with you, but like from a working capacity over yeah. these last few years. I see huge amounts of growth. I'm a board member now. I have to act correctly. Can't. You know, I can't be that six year old reckless girl anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. quickly, like, to wrap things up, like, what's up? What's next? Obviously, Paris. So you went to Tokyo. We'll go straight to Paris. We got a whole world champs. I know, but the reason I say Paris is because um, the, Olympi- Olympics. the Olympics are big, no, though, no. and it's quite close. Like, and usually it's like four years. I'm going to watch my French before I get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Usually like four years or something, but the Olympics are so close. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, because of the COVID situation, mm-hmm. it kind of is um, that moment. Also, Tokyo was great. But it was obviously COVID, mm-hmm. COVID restrictions, no fans. Yeah, that wasn't On, For us to live in, obviously, London, us, England, the it was the other side of the world. Yeah. Um, time zones were crazy. I, I did say, though, mm-hmm. that would be one of the best results for our sport. Can't really say for everybody else. What do you mean? For track and field, what, the records that were there. That track was beautiful. Oh, was yeah, hot. yeah. It was, it was tremendous. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. Like, I said it was always going to be great for that. And I know for a fact, had they had a crowd, they would have entertained it really well. Oh, they would have been fantastic. Shame. Well, I'm sure mm. they've they got, got world champs. They've got world champs coming, I think, as well. Mm. But I think Paris is going to be a big one. And also, I guess for you, the as, road, the for you as well, and another reason I mentioned it is because it would be, I know you, your, your mission is to become a free-time Olympian medalist. Mm-hmm. A free-time Olympian and a free-time medalist, which will be, a crazy, yes. crazy run. Yeah. So, and after the way you're moving, I feel like you're gonna make it happen, man. I know you're gonna make it. I happen. mean, it would be nice. I do love Paris, you know, the Paris city of love. I don't actually, maybe I just like French. I used to, well, I was doing those when I was going through my phase of trying to 
you know, educate myself. I was, I picked up a second language and it was French. Um, so I thought, you know, going to another Olympics in Paris would be nice. My family could attend that one. Hopefully if all drama calms down. Mm-hmm. And it literally is just across the road. It would be fun and it would be enjoyable. Yeah, my family, it would be nice. Okay. Like, who wouldn't want to be a three-time Olympic medalist? Uh, no one. No, also, it's going to be mad. Like, I think mm. you're, you, it's going to be a, a great championship. Should I become a dame after that? I need to a dame. Way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. let's let's get that MBE <laughs> or whatever you want. LBE, MBE. Why not? Do you, do, you, do you find that as a thing? Do you want the I titles? I don't know, you know. But after this whole um, the passing of the Queen and stuff, it's been a bit... You really look at it kind of differently for some reason. I don't know. Okay. So, dame... Princess. I wouldn't mind princess, but yeah. Well, look, Asha, <laughs> we could go on. There's a lot of things that we could even discuss, but I think we're going to have to have you on again and maybe we can talk more business and gateway and... Hopefully be my third or fourth number by then. Uh, we're still looking at things in the works. You know? Yeah, yeah, you're doing your thing. But Asha, honestly, it's been a privilege, a pleasure oh. to have you on. Um, I think your mindset is 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 on it. Like You're, you're, you're sharp. Thank you. You know what you want. Also, it's like, now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we got to figure it out now. Isn't it? Apparently, so we got to fly. <laughs> you got to make it happen now. But I hope that um, people who listen to this, especially that for the younger athletes, can definitely take like take some of this confidence. Like, if Why you, do you want to be a mentor, like deep down? Yeah, I think you should. I feel like that's one of my traits. I know I've got such a big heart, and there's enough to share. Mm. So. You got a, you, you're somebody for sure. You've got a lot of time mm-hmm. for people, and no matter where you go, I always see you give people your time. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Maybe that's good or bad at times. But yeah, you got to take your energy sometimes. Kinda, but yeah, yeah. But yeah. I've got better. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I always 100. tell people, "Am I ready for this? I don't know. But yeah. when I am, I'll give you the time I need. Give you your time. And as a senior member on the team, just like I would love to, I would want someone to be as open to me, to them. Well, when I was a youth, I would like to ask, had I known I could ask these questions. Yeah. So sometimes I just go in and start talking to athletes, but you'd want them to just ask all the right questions because I know things are changing every time, but, you know, I still want to, you know, just you know, give them a bit of guidance and make it easier. So I don't have to struggle as much as some of the previous athletes I've known have done or have had to struggle for. I hear it. Mm-hmm. That's good. So also mental as well. Thank you very much, guys. Add that to my... Um, my LinkedIn pages. Okay, <laughs> cool. CV's growing. Well, you're on LinkedIn now as well, so come on. It's true, I'm there. Um, Asha, thank you. Thank you. Gateway. Gateway. <laughs> come on. <laughs>